The exam questions often require you to apply algebra within a shape and space example, often triangles. They always say not to scale, so you can't measure to find x using a protractor. Anyway, we know that in a triangle, the angles always add to make 180. So this plus this plus this must equal 180. So we can begin by writing that down mathematically. 3x plus 2x plus x minus 40. They're the three angles. They must equal 180 due to the degrees in a triangle, making 180. I can then simplify. 3x, 2x and 1x is 6x. So 6x take 40 must equal 180. I then solve like any normal equation. I have to add 40. So 6x must equal 100, sorry, 220. I then divide by 6. So x must equal 220 over 6, which is the same as 110 over 3. And of course, when we know x, we can find each of the angles, e.g. this angle here is 3 times x, this angle here is 2 times x, and this is x take away 40. In the second example, we have two parallel lines hence the arrows. Now when you have two parallel lines, the angles contained therein add to make 180. So 5x plus 100 minus x must equal 180. This can be made simpler. 5x take away x is 4x. So 4x plus 100 must equal 180. I therefore take 100. So 4x equals 80. And then divide by 4. So x is equal to 20. So this angle, 5 times 20 is 100. This one, 100, take away 20 is 80. Now, it's normally good practice in the exam to explain your logic a bit more carefully. So, this fact here about 180 can be referred to as supplementary angles. And often you'll put in brackets the reason for that. Just as in the first example, you may put triangle equals 180 degrees. And that extra step is often required to get the full marks in the exam. Now just a quick comment. Those of you who are eagle-eyed would have recognised that this answer here is actually less than 40, which produces a negative angle here in the triangle. This was just an example made up on the spot to explain a technique. In the exam, of course, you'd get valid angles with the actual triangle itself.